This is a caulking gun. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it and probably have used one before. The problem is, this little stem here, it's too short. It doesn't fit where I need it to go. Let's go take a look at what I'm dealing with, and then I'll tell you what my plan is to fix it. So this is my garage door, or one of them anyways. And the problem is, it's got a little bit of play in it. And I live where it gets cold outside. Problem that I'm facing is, well, I need to seal the door up. But I can't get the caulking gun in there at the right angle to actually get into that door groove there. As much as I'd like to try, it's just too short. Story of my life. You might be able to see over at this door, I've got some access where I can come up here, use the caulking gun as needed. Of course, I don't need to over here because I've already done it. But that gives you a general idea of what I'm trying to do over at that door. On the other side of this door, we've pretty much got clear access just like we do over there. So my plan is to design a little adapter that can go on here, maybe flexible, maybe not. I haven't quite decided on that yet, but I need something that I can essentially stick in here and kind of hold from the back to kind of direct where I want the caulking to go. Just judging by eye, it needs to be about two inches past the top of the caulking gun. So we need to design something that can go over the top of this, probably by about an inch or so, just so it covers this initial lip. So it doesn't really need to be flexible now that I think about it. It really just needs to curve about five to 10 degrees just to give us enough angle. So when we stick it into here, it lines up with the edge of the garage door. So now that you know what the issue is and my plan to fix it, I'm gonna get out a sketchbook. We're gonna trace around the edge of the nozzle, take some measurements, and then we'll throw it into Shaper 3D and see what we can come up with. So the initial plan, I'm just gonna take the end of the caulk, stick it right onto the piece of paper. This is nothing fancy, nothing set in stone for lack of a better word, just to give me a general idea of the shape and then I can take some actual measurements with my calipers, mark those on the sheet, and then we can pull those into Shaper 3D. So the initial plan, obviously, draw our little line on there, and then I'm gonna take some actual measurements here of our caulking gun with my digital calipers. This is a Nico. I think I got this off of Amazon for around $25, $30 a couple years ago. Works great. If you're gonna pick one of these up, I don't recommend picking up the plastic ones. They're not accurate. They're not very good. Pretty flimsy. I would recommend getting one that is a metal one. And we can just take a couple measurements here at the, the widest part. We're looking at about 13.95, eh, we'll call it 14 millimeters. So we know this measurement here to here is going to be approximately 14 millimeters. All right, and then as we go down the shaft, we got 14, looks like about 12 and a half when it reaches this point. Then the part that really matters is right here where this little lip starts. It's going to be right around 11 and a half or 12, 11.46. We'll call it 11 and a half. If we have to make adjustments later, we can do that. That's what's cool about Shaper 3D or 3D modeling in general is that when you create the design, you can go back in afterwards and make some tweaks if things aren't the right dimensions. Last thing I need to get a measurement of is going to be the tip. That's going to come in about seven millimeters. So that's pretty much it right there. Not a very complex design, pretty easy to work with. Let's throw this into Shaper 3D and see what we can come up with. What I really like about Shaper 3D is not only is it available for the iPad, but it's also available for Mac and Windows. What's really great about this is all of your projects sync almost instantaneously. So we can create a new project. We're gonna start on the top plane because I wanna build this going up. This isn't a very structural part, so it doesn't need to be printed in any particular orientation. It can be printed basically from this part going up. So the first thing that I want to do is create a circle. That circle is going to be 14 millimeters. One thing I didn't take a measurement of was the distance between these two points, but since this is an accurate scale, what I can do is come into here. We're going to start off taking the measurement between these two points at about 17 millimeters. So then I'm gonna add a construction plane off of our bottom plane, and I'm gonna drag it up 17 millimeters. Just to make this process go a little bit smoother, I'm gonna take the measurement from our first point to our second point. So it looks like 12 and a half to about seven millimeters. So on top of that plane that we just created, we're gonna do another plane that is seven millimeters. Then, about 12 millimeters from that plane, we can create our last one. Now what we need to remember 
is that this outline is of our outer dimension of this caulking gun. So we're going to have to create a shell that extends it over this. We don't want to go in. We want to pull out. And this will make sense if you're not familiar in a little bit. On this plane, I'm going to do a sketch. We're going to draw a circle that is 12 and a half millimeters. On our next plane, we're going to draw another circle that is 11 and a half millimeters. And then on our third and final plane, we're going to draw our final circle at seven millimeters, which is pretty much the, uh, the tip here. So we've got our first plane, second plane, and third plane. And then our first sketch, aside from this initial sketch here, which was 14, so that'll be our 12 and a half millimeter sketch, our 11 and a half millimeter, and then our seven millimeter. You can hide the history tab. We don't need that right now. What I'm gonna do first is hide all three of our extra planes so we're not accidentally clicking on them. And I'm gonna go loft. So you can see right from there, we've kind of got that initial shape that we are looking for. Pretty much matches what the caulking gun looks like. Now what I need to do is make an extension on top of this. We don't need this whole part. This doesn't have to slide down. It can, but it doesn't have to. We really only need from about here up. So we could even come in here and drag this up to our second plane. And then we're kind of left with that little tip there. I want to do another plane offset to this. And we said it needs to be about two inches from the top of this so it can reach inside of our door. So we're going to put in 50 millimeters which is just under two inches. I'm hoping that will be enough. If not, we've got our 3D model and we can come back in here and fix it later on. I wanna add an offset plane that is about 12 millimeters on top of this original offset plane here. And you'll see why in just a second. Let's go from the front view. And I wanna drag this one that we just did off by about 10 millimeters. Eh, well, then maybe we go to five. Let's try five at first. And if that doesn't work, we can adjust. Go back to top down view. I want to select the first plane we created and do another sketch. And this doesn't have to really be any particular size. We just need it big enough for the caulk to come out from. So in that case, we can do about five. And then I'm going to draw the same thing on this other plane that we just did. Then I'm going to go from here to here to here, and we're going to loft it. Now, I don't really want this to be this particular shape, right? So I want to draw a sketch that goes from the point that we drew this at to the center of this guy here. Then what I can do, go back to this guy, click on this one, and we're going to loft it. That should bring it straight up. And I should be able to click on this, this, and this, and hit sweep. And now what we have is our little angled piece that's going to come up about two inches and then the angle that will come out after that. I'm going to hide all of our sketches and planes just so we're only working with our models. Then I'm going to go into Tools, Union. Okay. Now let's see if we can go into here, maybe fillet this out a little bit so it's not so rough. Do the same thing over here, kind of give it a little bit of a bend to it. And I should be able to click the top of this, the bottom of this, and hit shell. And then if I drag outwards, you can see dragging inwards will close up the hole. We don't want to do that because if we do that, it's not going to fit around the end. So we want to go out. And this doesn't have to be anything special. We'll just go one millimeter. And now you can see this should fit over top of this, come up, and then just give us that little angle. I'm going to add one more construction plane off the top of this surface coming up. And what I want to do with this construction plane is rotate it. So let's try 10 degrees. We can draw our five millimeter circle on top of that. So now that's at an angle. So let's go back to that shell command and delete it. We can do that again afterward. This guy I want to move and rotate, but I want to rotate from the edge at that 10 degree mark. That way it's lined up with the mark that we just made. We can shut the plane off. Now, what I really wanna do is just move this over. I wanna kinda get it aligned up with this surface here. So now 
a little bit better aligned. Then we can kind of play around with this. So we want our angle to kind of go towards the door, right? So if we set this up at about 35 degrees, then we should be able to come into here, click that guy and that guy and shell. Once again, let's hide our items. We're gonna go outwards one millimeter. And then I'm also going to apply a little fillet around the edge there. So this is a pretty basic design. May or may not be too big for this in terms of the length, but I'd rather have more than we need than less. One thing I will note with this is this is probably going to be a one-time use thing. If you consider our caulking gun is going to sit in here and pretty much cap out right around there, right? So as you squeeze the trigger, the caulk is going to move up the shaft and go out the hole. There will be no way to get that used caulk out of here. You might get some of it out, but you will never get all of it out. Now that we have this saved on here, we can pull it up on the computer and load it up into Orca Slicer. And I'm going to send it over to the P1P. That didn't take long. Print's finished. Let's see how it fits. One thing I want to make sure of is that the angle of this is matching the angle of this. But with this over the top, Let's go take it over to the garage door and see if it actually works. So it does fit. It's a little bit loose, but it, I mean, it kind of friction fits right over there. Let's just give it a go and it does fit in there. So let's see if we can get caulking to come out of it without pushing the actual part. That works really well, except now it's back feeding. But I mean, overall, it is doing what it was designed to do. It's just got a little bit too much back pressure in there. And well, you can see it's starting to come out the end. Okay, it does work, but there's a lot of caulking coming out of this end, primarily because I don't think the inside of this is big enough. I think if we widen the overall inside diameter, we would probably end up with a little bit of a better result. I mean, it leaks, but it does work. The other area I was having some difficulty with was right where this little board is. I can get pretty much everything on this side, but I was stuck when it came to this little area here, which I can actively feel air moving through right now. So I'm going to twist this around and see if we can get in here. Gross. As you can see, definitely a one-time use thing. However, the more caulking that we get around this thing, I think the more that it's gonna stay. However, this is gonna get clogged up pretty quick. Because this thing served its purpose for me, I don't really have a good reason to go back in there and redesign it for this particular case, but I will leave the file down in the description below. So if you guys want to modify the shaper file or redesign it for yourself, you can do that. It served its purpose for me. It was able to caulk the doors. I stopped a draft and I did it in like under an hour. So is it perfect? No. But did it serve its purpose? Absolutely. I think if I was going to redesign this again, what I would do is design something that fits around this part. That way when this is inserted into here and you have pressure applied against it. This part can't pop off. That was really our Achilles heel here was this thing kept wanting to come off. It did serve its purpose, but if I was going to redesign it, that would be how I do it. Probably make this a little bit longer, go all the way down to the end of the shaft here and then have a cap that goes around this. So when it's got pressure applied to it, this isn't coming off. That's where I'm going to wrap this one up. It completed its task. If you want the file for yourself, the full Shaper 3D file will be available for Patreon members and the STL file will be available for free. So if you want to download this exact model for yourself, it's available for free. If you want to play off of this model, maybe do what I was talking about, extend it down a little bit and put that cap on there. Patreon members, you get access to the full Shaper 3D file so you can go in there and play around with it. Now I'll be the first to admit I'm not the greatest at 3D design. I am working towards you know, getting there. However, I do want to show off more stuff with Shaper 3D. I've been using it for about two years off and on now. And from where I started to where I am now, it's a big jump. If you're interested in seeing more content like this with Shaper 3D and more of the design stuff, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. 
And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows that you enjoy this type of content. I will see you all in the next video, folks. I hope you all have a great and successful day. Take care.